What's up, dudes? Welcome back to another episode of Ramas Men's Team. Uh, pretty simple. We are a group of guys helping each other make progress towards each other's goals. If you're new to the channel, awesome and welcome. If you want to help support the channel and join our pro team, head over to ramasteam.com slash pro, where you can contribute to us on a donation basis. We also give you access to exclusive content, mastermind groups, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, hope you enjoy this episode and we'll see you on the team. Mr. Ray, what's going on, brother? Hello, Wes. Good. How are you? Uh, awesome, man. Uh, Ramas men's team, pretty simple. We help each other as men make progress on our goals. Uh, you know, it's pretty interesting. I just got done talking to uh, somebody and, um, oh, real quick, uh, I'm going to invite a bunch of guys up here. I uh, don't feel like any pressure to come on. Uh, if you want to be vulnerable, let's do it. And uh, we're open to uh, wins, losses, obstacles, etc. And we will riff on the situation if you guys are cool with that. Um, so yeah, so I was just talking to, I would say a very successful uh, friend of mine. And he was talking about another successful guy, you know, you know probably make I think he made like a couple million a year or something like that. And um, he was talking about using a heuristic as his like sort of like career secret sauce. And um, I really like heuristics, which is just like big categorical ways um, of solving a problem. And so for him, his heuristic was, I turn the lights on. And that's what he constantly had in as a mantra in his head. And uh, he was a sales guy. And every time a new sale, like a new alpha sales guy tried to come into the company, he always tried to, right, like get in earlier to the office than this guy. Um, and it eventually got to such a competitive point where this guy, you know, the the big alpha guy was uh, getting in at 4 a.m. in the morning. And he would do that for about a week just to make sure, right, that the, uh, the newbie didn't encroach on his territory. Now, for me, I, my brain tends to sort of, uh, how would you say, like be a little bit disagreeable towards those because that those types of things are more of like vanity metrics to me. Um, but I will say, man, for work, I feel like it's relatively applicable, right? It's like, I'm just going to sit there for two hours and do it. Doesn't like, you know, one could argue it's like, Oh, well, if you sit there for two hours, it doesn't mean shit. What matters is if like you, if you actually do something in those two hours, you know, let's say of a focus time. But the reality is, Right, like you could probably track that heuristic and probably with pretty strong correlation, you would see that some shit's getting done. Similarly, with the guy who shows up at 4 a.m. in the morning, probably a good heuristic uh, metric to track whether or not like who's on the top. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, in practical terms, the guy who shows up at 4 a.m. is probably not bringing a sleeping bag and, and sleeping in the office till eight, right? Like. Uh, that would be just a quantity over quality kind of situation. But I'm sure he, uh, it's not just the who, you know, who clocks in first. I'm sure he's following all kinds of metrics in terms of sales, in terms of calls placed, in terms of cold calls, in terms of outreach, in terms of all the inputs. So I think that, uh, especially when you're starting a business, and I'm, I, th I am three years in, now so i would still consider it like this is a game i want to play for the rest of my life right so i would still consider this early days in a good way and there is no um substitute for being the first one in the office or putting in the hours or or working as much as possible um, in the early days that's what i understand yeah yeah exactly and i, I think you know so i'd like to throw it around it's like and I know it's more, uh, maybe a bit more of like an abstract or cerebral topic, but I do think it's really important because I think, you know, there can be a certain amount of friction that is caused. Let's say if you try to have too many things to track or too many goals, you know, to the point where it's like, you just feel like you're just constantly chasing your tail versus like the big categorical things. Like for instance, I would put weighing yourself in the morning, which we have on the scorecard. I am very aware that that 
to the decimal science of body fat percentage, which that that is what would be more right, or less the health metric. But the reality is measuring body fat percentage is not exactly easy, or at least it's not as easy as stepping on the scale every morning. Um, I also know that stepping on the scale, right, depending on if you had more water or more salt the night before is going to dramatically impact the scale. But over the long term, that heuristic, I think, is an incredible sort of bio, uh, biomarker of whether or not you're being successful in your health journey, if that makes sense. Arjuna, let me throw it over to you. Uh, what are your thoughts on directionally, like heuristically and directionally seeing if you're pointed towards true north rather than to the decimal measurement of certain things? Does that make sense? Um, are you talking about kind of like on a micro macro level and being like hyper focused on the smaller steps rather than like bigger picture steps? So actually, I, I think I think we're saying I might be th saying the opposite of like, if you're being, if particular in particular, if you have some sort of friction of starting something or not going down the road of uh, of accomplishing a goal because you feel like it's too complicated. Well, I don't think it's that complicated at all. So, for instance, I want to be an A plus player in my career. Well, you probably don't know how to do that yet if you're just starting out. But you know what you do know? You know that if you show up early you put yourself in a better chance of being more successful. You know, you might not know how to count calories or you might not know all of the details about macro and micronutrients, but you do know that the less potato chips you eat, the more probability you are, you're going to have in your favor of losing weight. Do you know what I mean? So, cause I think that gets in a lot of, in the way of a lot of people. Like I don't know all of the playbook. So therefore I'm just not going to do it until I'm fully ready. It's like, how about you just go to the fucking gym and then you'll figure it out from there. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like kind of like, you know, practicing your one, your one, two, rather than just daydreaming about being the heavyweight champion of the world or something like that kind of 100%. stuff. 100%. Um, yeah, I'm all about that. I mean, I had glute, do, I still have delusions of grandeur in all of my ambitions, but at the end of the day, I'm still at the parkour gym with the 10 to 13 year olds practicing vaults with some guy who's a trainer who's younger than me because those are the steps that I have to take in order to get to, you know, flipping over the buildings or whatever it may be. I think those, those are all very important. And I feel fortunate enough to be out of my own way to where my relationship with my intuition is so clear that my whole sphere of ambition is all like, I can see the nucleus in pretty much all of my micro decisions, even the difference between like, going to this program that gives free organic food that's gonna get thrown away from farmers markets to going and spending money on food. Like I can, I can feel all those steps, whether they're either taking or expanding on whatever those North Star goals are. I, I, it, I can't get away from it. Every choice I make. Yeah, and I like to your the, point uh, earlier. I like the, please, right? Wes, I like how he said, get out of your own way. That was great. Yes, and that's the thing, because I mean, guys like me, I will go into the eternal abyss on minutia. Right. And like, so my natural state is to fully understand how the watch works before I even look at what time it is. You know, and if I, if I can't articulate like out to the fifth de decimal place of how that machine works, I almost like my brain just like, well, I'm not going to fucking play the game because what if this, what if this, what if I fail? What if I don't blah, 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 blah. It's like, just fucking show up. How about that? We start at that high level metric. Phil, let me throw it over to you, brother. What are your thoughts on this? You know, uh, I hope my guy, I hope my connection is good enough. I feel like I'm breaking up right now, but um, uh, yeah, I I think you know I constantly think about you know, a lot more than I should think about like how many times in the past when I've made up like reasons why I can't do X, Y, or Z, and then in hindsight, it's just like it's just like crazy. It's like just like crazy how much of a delusion that is because it's like it's just never it's just never the truth. It's like, you can, you can, you can always make little small steps towards it. But, um, um, one thing that, I mean, the, the, one of the main things that this kind of brings to mind for me is, is like small, like, you know, that whole thing about how like, you know, 10,000 hours makes a master or whatever, but the, the truth, the true statement there is like 10,000 hours of 
serious study in which you know when you're failing or succeeding is what makes a master. Like that's the important part is knowing the, the, it seems like the most important thing in skill acquisition is a very, uh, is going through the cycle of doing a thing, being unsure, trying to do the thing, and then knowing definitely as definitely as possible, whether you succeeded or failed and how much you succeeded or failed. And then literally you want to go through that cycle as many times as possible. That's how you get better at things is when you know for sure, okay, I did this and that was a success or was a failure or whatever. And you can't, you can't know for sure with certain things, but, um, the, I think this is especially a problem in video games because people think nowadays, you know, games gotten like games are made by like a, literally like 500 people and they cost like a billion dollars. So people think like, Grand Theft Auto so big, I can't make that, but maybe I could make, you know, this other game, which also took like 50 people, professionals, or right? It's like the, the games you should start making at, when you're first starting out are like, you should literally make a game where you push a button and one thing happens and that's it. And that'll be like, it, I think it, honestly, I think also like the internet in general, the internet type of culture really adds to this problem where people see so much incredible skill out there on YouTube. Like it's just, I'm, I'm getting super feedback. Who it is. Um, there, there's so many like incredibly high skill people on YouTube and on the internet and stuff that it's like, it's hard to be humble and be like, no, I want to learn to draw and I'm going to start out by drawing a box or I'm going to draw a cylinder and like try to do that. Well, you know, like that's how you get better is by starting at the beginning. If you start out like that's the problem with people, people who try to make these like, year long projects as their first video game. It's like, you're just wasting, you're kind of wasting that year because you're going to get to the end of a year and have completed one cycle of like, okay, that didn't work. And it took you a year. You could have made a game in a week. You should have made a game in a week. You know, you shouldn't try to draw this incredible in, insane painting or, or drawing that takes you a year as your first drawing. Right. But for some reason with certain things, people don't think that way, I guess. Nah, I don't know. I really, yeah. Anyways. So Paul, I think that's... please, please comment on Phil's 17 minute response, <laughs> which I love. That is not a busting the balls, the balls of Phil, which I love, but it's going to be a challenge. You, you go through the nuances of that brother, Paul, you're up. I think, uh, I, the, the iterative process in like going through those challenges and developing an appetite for failure as well as an appetite for success, I think is like pretty critical to the process, especially as you're going through and like learning a new skill, like you need that rush of like dopamine or whatever. Like when you, at least for me, like when I figure out a problem that's complex or difficult, like I don't like feel a negative feeling when I fail as much as I feel like the good feeling when I do it, you know? And it's like, that's what leads me like coming back and kind of chasing more and chasing more and like, Oh wow, that was interesting. Like, let me try and learn more about this. Or like, that's, that's what like drives me internally, you know? And I see a lot of like in the role that I'm in now, like I started off, I thought I wasted a lot of time. Like I came in as like an entry level role. I was like overqualified for the position, but it was like the only place that would hire me. And then now like 10 years later, like turns out that experience starting at the very bottom and getting like, the most basic grunt, like literally from like the equivalent of like the mail office to like getting close to the front office, you know, like working through that. Uh, I mean, that experience is, is valuable every step along the way, like the relationships that you develop with people, the skills that you learn uh, and the lessons where you do and don't fail along the way, you know, like it, it, it's all very, uh, I guess, important to the process and the growth, you know? Yeah. And, and Paul, let me ask you this on, on the original topic here. Like, is there any, if you don't mind me asking anywhere in your life where you're not doing something or, or not starting something because you're worried about the details rather than just getting started. So again, putting back to heuristics, Hey, maybe it's, I, I've been meaning to go to the gym for the last three years, but I don't understand how all the machines work. So I'm just not going to go right. Versus like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to measure myself on whether or not I opened up the gym door. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think uh, for me, like I've been like, it's starting to get nice down here. I'm like, I know I need to start riding my bike again, you know, 70, 80 degrees every day, like get the fuck outside, you know? And it's like, oh, I just like hate myself enough to stay inside. <laughs> it's like, but I like that, like, 
the difference in the measurement, like, cause for me, it's like success is like, did I go for like a 10 mile ride? Right. Like that is uh, mm. difficult to just get into right off the bat. So maybe a better measurement is like, Hey, did I ride my bike for a half an hour today? Or like, did I even get out? Like making it a more manageable than just, so yes, I have that issue I'm currently going through right now. Uh, yeah, that, that is a perfect example. And uh, Pablo, yeah, no, I, I hate, I hate even saying the word heuristics because it sounds like a stupid fucking SAT word, but it's like, it's like how I think about it in my mind. So I'll read the definition here just in case anybody uh, is, is wondering. So a heuristic uh, is a technique or any approach to problem solving that employs a practical method that is not fully optimized, perfected, or rationalized. Nevertheless, it yeah. is still sufficient for reaching uh, a goal. Um, like and, like uh, a heuristic uh, is like a rule of thumb. Yes. A heuristic is like literally like a rule of thumb. It's like it's not it's not a it's not a definite procedure. It's like a general direction of like yes, this is good, but we don't know exactly. Yep, mm. exactly. And Paul is uh, saying a perfect example. And actually, Paul, it's a great it's a great point because often. I think it's somebody who has experience maybe in the past of they were more involved in bike riding or they used to be a gym goer, you know, a lot. And now they're getting back into it. And it's like, well, shit, if I can't do 55 pull-ups today, I'm not even going to do one, you know, like that sort of thing. And Paul's saying the exact same thing, right? If I, I, I measure myself in 10 mile increments that therefore like anything below that is not even worth one unit. Um, Ray, is, does this come up in your life at all? Um, are you holding yourself back because maybe you're trying to be too precise, um, et, et cetera? What are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, absolutely. And uh, like like Phil was saying, you know, um, learn how to draw a tree before you draw the Sistine Chapel, right? And uh, and that's kind of what we do with our scorecard in the morning, right? Sleep, exactly. water, weight exercise, meditation, act of love, goal review, learning, journaling. Uh, because um, when you start when you start at the beginning, rather than just trying to enter the C-suite or try to enter at the Olympic level, um, you get to stack those wins, right? You draw the tree, then you draw the building, then you draw the figures, then you can draw the Sistine Chapel ceiling if you want. And so I think um, it's a good reminder for me because it, it's been two weeks since I've sold a piece of art, which is fine. Like that's, that it does not qualify as a drought, you know, but emotionally, just because of the nature of um, the, the emotional roller coaster of sales, it feels like it's panic time. It, it feels like it's hoard the cans of beans and tuna time. But uh, it is, um, I, I think I just need to, uh, think about heuristics. Think about the rules of thumb. Think about, you know, the more I do this, yes, the more um, I sell, right? And uh, that, that's like, sorry, I'm I'm kind of lagging out. Feel. Sorry, my connection's really bad. My bad. Go my bad. Feel, uh, your connection's the best it's but, ever been, man. So that, no, that, that's the <laughs> same. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not Phil, mind, but like, uh, Ray, Ray the, that's, off every day so you you owe him a bunch of cutoffs so feel free, please feel free yeah no but like that's the exact same problem i'm in ray is that like it's so frustrating to me well yeah i shouldn't let i shouldn't let myself get so frustrated about how hard it is to know what success is because with game design you know you have to make a whole game and then also you have to get people to play it and even if they play it, you still don't really know, like, just because they say they, they like it, that doesn't necessarily, like, it's very hard to gauge, like, is the thing that I want to do, am I getting good at that? Am I getting better at that? You know, it's very, very ambiguous process sometimes. I feel like sales is probably also very ambiguous because it's like, it's kind of like you're, you're like literally a, a little rat in the Skinner box where it's like, you're just pushing all these random buttons and then something happens and you make a lot of money and you're like, well, which thing you know, which thing actually contributed and which didn't, you know, it's like almost impossible to, to know. And I always really, really wish I could find ways to like objectify that and be like this, this is what I should focus my energy on. And this is what I shouldn't. I don't, I always struggle with how to figure out what, what is relevant and what isn't. Cause I don't, I don't want to waste my time, but um, I don't really know how to do that. It's hard. So, I mean, yeah, like heuristics maybe is 
a more reasonable simplification of that, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I feel, I uh, sorry, uh, Wes, uh, if I can just cut you off. Um, this conversation <laughs> is a reminder of how important it is for us to come up with a work scorecard because uh, like Kaizen just said in the chat, uh, the scorecard is also great North Star when shit gets crazy and life is in chaos. Uh, so our scorecard is um, is a great way to ground yourself, do your fundamentals, you know, uh, do your your good habits and stack your wins. Um, we yeah, um, we really need to come up with one, right? Which is, I mean, it, it it'll be a, maybe it's going to be harder, maybe not. Uh, because uh, because people have such varying jobs, but if we can come up with like the ten things you have to do every day um, related to work, you know, in in terms of that kind of narrow definition of success, I think that would be a very easy answer to give anyone who is stuck in their head, like Phil and I, or needs to get out of their own way, like um, Arjuna and I. Oh, I, I can tell you right now, if anybody's looking for a quick little cheat code on work productivity, and I've said this many times on here over the past, is like, turn off all distractions, focus for two hours. Like, like and, and just that fucking journey, like, I, I promise you it'll take you six months to actually do that, right? Like, zero distractions, like, make sure you pee before you do it, and like, I'm zooming in, and I don't care what craft you're in, doesn't matter, right? Like, just pure focus at the highest quality work you could possibly try. Uh, man, it took me like I, probably a good fucking year to be able to get even through like one rep of that, you know, continuously. Um, Kaizen, this topic, brother, if, you, if you've been hearing it, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I think it's, it's like uh, when you go bowling, if you take kids bowling, and they haven't figured out how to not throw a gutter ball. So you're throwing up those little bumpers on the side and you have those guide ways. So they kind of get the idea of how to figure out how to bowl. That's basically, you're like setting up that. So hitting those main things. And like I said, with the scorecard, there's always going to be just random variables that come into play all the time. Like everybody's life is just constantly one challenge after another. You're either in the middle of one or getting ready to start another one or finishing one. So it's like all the time. But if you're like, all right, if I do this, 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 no matter what else is kind of going on or happening, that will allow me to kind of take care of these things or put myself in the best position to where I can manage all of these X, Y, Z things happening. Because if you don't, it's easy to kind of get like wrapped up in the tornado of shit, but rather you're fighting to ground yourself and be like the eye of the storm with everything going around around you to where you can kind of like, all right, if I can control anything, it's this, I'm going to do this. And that will kind of make everything else a little bit easier to manage. Yep. Com completely agree. Um, and I want to acknowledge uh, Jake uh, saying over here, said this has been a huge hurdle in my dietary struggles. Eating an incredibly restrictive diet seems so daunting and has been. But starting small, the dominoes start to fall and everything becomes easier and easier. And that, that's a perfect example of like, hey, I need to lose a little bit of weight. So I'm going to go on this incredibly restrictive diet. You know, <laughs> like, you know, that's like, uh, I think I didn't work out for a long time before. And I went to like to do P90X, which is like, for me at the time, felt like a fucking military exercise, you know, coming from like a couch potato, like six months injury or something like that. And go, and it's like, you know, just setting yourself up to fail. Um, all right, I want to I want to take a hard right turn here and see if this topic lands because it hit home for me recently. Uh, Ray and I were talking to another buddy of ours yesterday, and he he cracked out this Deion Sanders quote because we just went to New York City and we're like around the financial district, et cetera, and you got like pure killers there. Like people are like saying, "I want to be the best at everything at all times, so, so that you know that I'm better than you." Like that's their whole right vibe. Um, like very much Kobe Bryant style, you know? And um, one of the topics that came up uh, was this Deion Sanders quote, um, which Ray, I know is grammatically incorrect, but it was, what was it, Ray? Um, Look good, feel good, play good. And I wanted to have a little bit of a rallying if, if you And another way to say it, Wes, is if you look good, you feel good, then you play good. 
but that doesn't yeah. that doesn't cure the play well um correct construction at the end but the, 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 the i think yeah. the the magic is in the rep repetition of y'all look good y'all feel good y'all play good it's um anyway we get it yeah so i yeah yeah and uh patty p just put the nail in the coffin and then get paid good you know um so i want to have a little bit of a rallying cry around this because i'm curious is is as a team of the male species i got i feel like we got to step it up in how we look you know it's like on a scale of zero to ten right um are you putting as much effort into how you appear out there to the world by the way not that you have to sell out in any version of what somebody else wants but if you had to create your own logo of you are you showing up as that every day or is it I'm just waking up and rolling out of bed because I let the alarm go off 15 times? Yeah, there you go. Right. Um, I'm glad so, you asked Wes because uh, that, um, yeah, that really struck a chord with me as well. Yesterday uh, I was in Venice for um, a week for um, the Venice Biennale, which is like the art Olympics. And uh, so I, I dusted off all of these, um, hold on, pocket square. I dusted off all of these uh, pre-pandemic <laughs> clothes, right? And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it really like, it really felt, and it, it absolutely, it felt good. I looked good, I felt good, and I played good. Like it was, um, if we want to argue that it shouldn't matter how we're dressed, well, that we can have that argument you know, till the cows come home. But really, um, when you sh the way you dress, you are telling people how to treat you, right? Or you are telegraphing or um, communicating what you either what your job is, either the job you have or the job you want. And so, like, uh, it's an opportunity again, just like the way we tell our origin story. The way we dress is an opportunity to communicate the story that we want people to hear not the story that life has nope. forced upon us right so um it makes me think about the beard too and i know you, you you and you and colin told me to give it a couple more days but i think uh looking like some people can pull off the beard and i don't know i wonder like it, i mean i do look like a bit of a cancer patient the way it's patchy and everything you know so um i like it dude I know, I know, I know, I know. We got everyone else on the call is on uh, Team Beard too. But like, look at look at Paul. I mean, the guy's just like, there's like a Sasquatch sighting in the middle of this call, man. Like, like I just, I wish I could have that full. Co I wish I could have that full coverage, dude. But anyway, uh, uh, go ahead, Wes. So um, yeah, that so, that also well, resonated would, with me. So, uh, no, I had some. I had a question for Wes, but I don't want to cut you off, Wes. Were you? What were you going to say? Please go for it, brother. Oh, well, um, so, I mean, obviously, you know, I look like shit on all these calls is because I don't try at all. Obviously. I mean, that's the, you know, that's the, the straightforward answer is I don't try at all to fucking look good. Um, well, I have so many hangups about clothing and I know probably 99% of them are bullshit, but let, let me give you my main hang up. Um, right now is that like, Dude, honestly, you know, you know, it's it's so embarrassing to even admit this. But when I some, see someone, not everyone, when I see a lot of people that look really, really nice, like well, well dressed, like I get really like aggressively angry, and like it's so pathetic the way I feel about them. I'm like, I'm like, you're a fucking bitch. Like, fuck you. Like, that's my emotion, and it's like it's ridiculous that I feel that way because it's obvious it's obviously insecurity or it's at least some degree of insecurity but look okay so let me get to my fucking point um my one of my main hang-ups with with looking dressing nice like and like i said i know this is probably ridiculous bullshit but i just want to hear what you have to say like um is is i feel like so many the the, the i feel like the 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 negative side of of appearance is 
like faking it, faking it till you make it. But a lot of people never are trying to make it. They're only doing the faking it part, you know? And it's like, that's such a big thing these days is like projecting, like, because the internet allows you to so easily curate what you put out into the world visually, like it's so easy to like fake it and, and just always be faking it. And I, I always, I'm like, I feel like that's part of why I've like convinced myself that like, I, I don't even want to try about all this stuff is because like, I don't even want to be anywhere near that world of faking it at all. Like I want to be like, I don't know. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'd explain yeah. that well. But. No, no, I, 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 it does dude. No. And that, that's exactly why we bring this stuff, stuff up so we can kind of sort of tease our way through all the details. Um, Kaizen, yeah. I would, I want to respond to Phil, but I first want to throw it over to you. Cause I, I feel like, given your background and study uh, hobbies, et cetera, and your prior profession, et cetera, you've got to have some interesting take on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, um, that's, it's, it's a topic I don't think gets addressed a lot. There are some, like you'll see like Instagram pages and stuff on it for like men's fashion and stuff. This isn't, this isn't like some, uh, what is, what is it, gay eye for the straight guy? This isn't like blouse talk. This is make yourself yeah, right. presentable so you don't look like a homeless piece of shit and people treat you like you're a crazy, insane person. Like, if you want to be the best version of yourself, then treat yourself with respect. If you have somebody else in your life that is not looking great, make sure you're taking care of yourself first and then being like, okay, if I actually care for this person, then I'm going to take, I'm gonna, I would like cut their hair. I would, if you have a beard, trim it up to where it looks maintained and groomed like if you have a dog that has mange and it's got fleas and its fur looks like crap then people would probably call like PETA or saying you're abusing the dog if that's you then you need to start like okay I need to shower regularly I need to wash <laughs> my legs in the fucking shower dudes I need to wash my feet in the shower dudes because I know most of you guys don't do it <laughs> you need to brush you need to floss you need to do, do. all that shit and then it's not that big of a deal when you want to. Right, go dude, let's, I brush my teeth. All right, let's. I'm not trying to say this. Shit. Jesus Christ! I brush my and teeth. This, what the? This is this is all dudes. <laughs> I've, done, I've had this talk so many fucking times. It's every dude, and this is and that's why I'm saying it. the fashion stuff. Find <laughs> what fits your body style. Like if you're if you're not in shape, if you're in shape, find clothes that fit your body style. Don't wear like just giant baggy stuff all the time. But if you want to, if you're like chilling out, all right. But if you have a job, make sure your pants are clean, your shirt's clean, everything is like up kept. Like the example that we had, Wes brought this up, what, like a year ago or something? And MFG had that crazy beard and he trimmed it all up and it looked fucking super sharp. So when you look, like when the quote, when you look good, you have a lot more self-confidence in yourself. So people will automatically be able to sense that from you. So whatever it is that you do, like if you wear a suit, when people have these pictures on their Facebook of them going to the one wedding a year where they actually wear a suit and tie, and that's their one picture for the year where they actually look decent. Well, if that's how they feel at that time, you think they've dressed up, they're feeling probably their best, you can do that all the fucking time that doesn't have to be like for a special event or something that can just be hey it's monday uh i'm not feeling that great but there's one thing that i can control i'm gonna clean myself up i'm gonna get myself looking sharp so i at least feel good about myself or whatever happens maybe i have an opportunity that that little bit of confidence ends up paving whatever way to whatever it is that you end up falling into and it's just from brushing your fucking teeth right like, yeah no and i i I agree. I mean, I also think, I think there's two sides to look at it, right? It's like, what are we expressing to other people? And then also it's like, I, it's, it's almost like cleaning up your room. You know, the amount of guys that I know were like, Oh no, I, this is just how I like it. I know where everything is. It's like, all right, how about we clean up your room and t tell me that you don't feel better. Right. Like, and be honest with you, same thing for dressing. And I don't give a shit if anybody wears, you know, but it's like, I'm saying it for us men, like, how about if you have any sort of like monkey brain, monkey talk in your brain right now, like, oh, fuck that, like, et cetera. By the way, I'm also not saying you got to wear a tux. I'm just saying like, I wonder what it would look like if you were intentional about the clothing, right? Even if it's a sweatshirt, it's like, 
Is it a sweatshirt that was actually, okay, that one looks good and there's a reason I'm getting it, whatever. Um, I dare somebody who has chatter in their brain with this right now to just go out and try it, right? Like go out and try getting the haircut, go out and try and tighten up the clothing a little bit, like be intentional and just see if it, it for nobody else, don't even fucking go out in the world. Just look in the mirror and tell me whether or not you feel good. And Paul, let me throw it over to you, brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm going, I'm going through this a little bit, like <clears throat> having to go back to work lately and I'm not used to getting my haircut, but like every two or three months and now it's like, been like a month and a half and i'm like i don't want to spend like the 60 bucks or whatever go get a haircut and beard cut but i'm like fuck going to work i'm like going interacting with people interacting with customers like i need to do it you know and then plus it's like trying to get back out there dating because to me it was always like dressing up and all that was always gay you know like everyone's like well oh, you look you put on <laughs> cologne and they're like who the fuck are you pepe Le Pew? like fucking faggot yeah. get out of here you know like that that was always like the even like going to weddings and stuff when I go back home now or funerals, people are still just wearing jeans and a, and a shirt, maybe a polo. The polo is the fancy part, you know? So it's like challenging like my own perceptions of that. And then also like trying to like, I'm tired of like trying to meet people online, like girls online. So it's like, all right, if I want to approach somebody in public, I have to look presentable or like approachable, you know? And it's like, finally this year I bought like, normally I buy pants. I've been buying them like, a size kind of up because I'm like, I'm probably going to get fatter, (laughs) you know, like I've been doing that for as long as I have. And this is the first time I bought probably like six pairs of pants and I like bought them at the right size. And it's like, I need to like, not like plan to get fatter a, and then like B like have something that's going to look good and be approachable and like where I can look good to approach people. So, well, and, and to your point, Paul, if you don't mind me saying this, um, actually when I was in New York with, with a buddy, uh, I've got a girlfriend, but he's single and, um, we were out in Brooklyn. And as you can imagine, there are a bunch of attractive females around like the areas that we were. Um, and my friend is super self-aware and he, he's like, he's in a, a monochromatic sweatsuit that does not exactly fit him that well, you know? And he's like, he, it, it got in the way of him talking to just people in general, uh, let alone females. And, the takeaway that he had is like, Oh shit, man. He's like, I didn't realize how many opportunities I have in front of me, but I'm just not ready for them for no other reason that I'm not taking advantage of the things that I could control. And my attire is something I can control. My hair is something I can control my beard, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, MFG, let me throw it over to you, brother. What, what's your perspective on this? Our favorite Boston psychologist, uh, MFG, let's do it. Well, these days I'm a very high fashion individual. As you can tell, that's why we had you the, Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I think I think part of that too is not only just what you're wearing, how you're dressed, or even how you're groomed, but if you're a squared away motherfucker, it shows. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you got your shit together, even if only in your mind. I mean, because it it's hilarious. I mean, I used to get my fucking haircut every week, beard trim every week, used to dress impeccable. You know what I mean? And, uh, and ironically, the, the reaction that I get back from the world now where literally I, I think I own one pair of jeans. That's like a going out pair of jeans now. And that's only until eventually it becomes a work pair of jeans. (laughs) Um, (laughs) but, (laughs) but now the, the, the response that I get back just being, more congruent with myself you know what i mean and and also too man it's like it's i don't mean to sound uh too harsh here but when you're in shape you can go buy a fucking suit at walmart and it's going to look good on you you know what i mean if yes, it, it doesn't have to point. be crazy you don't have to be some giant jack person but just have your shit together you can yeah, i mean i get more attention and more positive feedback and and also too I'm not dealing with like a lower class of society. I mean, the gym, I, you know, I'm smart. So I go to like a, you know, a gym in like the rich suburb of Charlotte, you know what I mean? And, and even like my clients, like we're at a house the other day, it's like a $9.7 million mansion that we're doing some custom work for. And <laughs> you know, when you carry yourself in a certain way, that's going to transcend just about everything except for raised patchy fucking beard. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> so, um, Kaizen, uh, as always, dropping some wisdom in the comments. Um, 
at, first of all, I love the quote, Kai Zen. You said, we had a quote. It was always dress like you have the potential to meet the love of your life. Um, fucking love it. Like, 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 like absolutely love it. Um, and Kai Zen, I am a hundred percent down for, uh, needing a summer fitness challenge to get everyone going. I'm in like, mm -hmm. like I, I will start like literally immediately. Um, so let's just kick it off uh, if everybody's cool with it. Uh, so I'll start posting. Uh, I'll, I'll post my before pic because, yeah, I look like a fucking pond fish right now, right? Like, you know, I'm kind of like skinny fat right now, and that drives me yeah. fucking crazy. Um, so uh, so let's do a challenge. Um, I'll post my before pic. And here's what I would say as well. Anybody who's, who's interested in this, again, heuristics, right? Of course, if you count your calories, weigh everything out, you're like, that's the most precise. It's also the fucking hardest. Um, so I will be posting um, workouts. I'll be posting uh, pictures of what I eat. Because I have found that to be mm. a really good rule of thumb of like, for anybody who's saying like, oh, I don't know how to eat healthy. How many grams of protein do you need? Oh, yeah. it's like, stop. How about this? Just before you put anything in your face hole, take a picture of it. And I guarantee you know whether or not that picture is going to look good or bad when you post. It. Do you know what I mean? Like you're going to hesitate. It's like, oh, that donut that I wasn't sure. If, you know, uh, blah, blah blah. So I would say let's do that. Anybody who's down for it, let's fucking do it. We'll post it on the Discord. Um, Kaizen, anything to add to that, brother? Because I think it's a phenomenal recommendation. Yeah, um, I kind of like touching in on what uh, MFG just said, like the whole congruency. So a lot of this stuff, if you haven't done it in a while, and a lot of people get into this thing where they'll beat themselves up. Like maybe you used to work out and you're like, I could do a hundred pushups in a row and now you can barely do five. Well, if you do five, that's better than nothing. If like all, a lot of these, like myself included, I took time off where I didn't get to go to the gym and I lost a lot of the gains that I had. So I kind of have to start back over, but it's not going to start day one going in there and blasting this out. If you do a little bit, that's better than nothing. And each one of those is going to be progress. And I, dude, I'm so fucking pumped because I know everybody oh, yeah. is going to be in. killing some shit. The last time that we had the running challenge, everybody was out running, throwing miles and stuff up there. So whatever it is, if you sweat, if you do something physical, it doesn't have to be 20, 30, 50 miles. It doesn't have to be a thousand mile bike ride. If you do something, throw it up in there because everybody throwing all their kind of stuff in there is like, given everybody else permission to go work out and then you become part of something bigger and that kind of gives you more motivation to, okay, I, I'm going to keep working out. I'm going to go work out just so I can show my buddies. Hey, I'm doing it too guys. Cause there's not a whole lot of other communities that are doing healthy, positive things for dudes. So here's an opportunity to do something. So take it and yeah. use it to the fullest extent. Hell yeah. I, I'm a hundred percent. Thank you Kaizen for your leadership on that. Um, real quick, just to take some inventory of this, uh, Kyle is is running the Discord and so on. He's on the on our team. Um, is that working for everybody? Because I know we now have like some restrictions around like the the huddle part of the Discord. And for anybody who was around for that time, there was a reason we put those restrictions on because one person in particular, you know, was uh, was getting a little unruly there. Um, is it, please, guys, let me know if if the restrictions are too restrictive. Um, and then with, to that end. Kaizen, where do you want us to post in the, should we post in the huddle, which is the main channel on our discord, or do you want to post somewhere else for this? I, I think we still have that fitness one that's on there. If you guys yep. throw something on there, if not, if you, if you can't do that extra click, throw it in the huddle, just throw something up there. That way you're getting more activity too. And everybody's kind of being able to talk to each other a little bit more. You'll see some of the names pop up, become more familiar with these guys. That way people will get to know you too. If you're one of these guys that are afraid to go on screen or just <laughs> checking these out and not sure, try it. Yeah. It's not going to yeah, hurt 100%. nothing. Yeah, don't talk shit to anybody. So nobody talks shit on anything that anybody's doing. If they're starting from square one, this is lifting each other up. This is everybody just do something. It doesn't have to be anything amazing. Just do something. Yep, exactly. And, and also, I would tell everybody who's hesitant to post – in there it's like number one do it for yourself because i want you to take the trophy to be honest with you i, I don't like posting this kind of stuff out there and like re regular social media stuff because it's, it's got a whole bunch of like 
my other friends out there who have no idea what we do in here, right? Like females, et cetera. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in like making progress with, with a group of men like you guys. Um, so take the trophy for yourself, even if it's a fucking walk around the block, right? Like you are starting from wherever you are at and that's fucking amazing. In fact, if you're starting from like absolute zero, I'm actually a little bit jealous because you can make a lot of progress in a short period of time. The second thing is, man, post so that it gives another guy right who's similar to you a little bit of inspiration it's like oh if he can fucking do it so can i so uh yeah i would love to do this journey with you guys i'm 100 percent down i would say what do you think guys then do it for a month two months what, just so we have a finite end period so people don't feel overwhelmed what are you thinking yeah like uh we could have a check-in after a month and then after two months everybody yeah. posts like the afters that way it gives everybody time to get something going because some, I mean, everybody has different schedules. You're not going to be able to do like three hour, four hour workouts. And some people have different schedules and shit going on. But if you do something during that time, throw it up there. Cause then that's a win. Yep. No matter, no matter what, that's at least one win. And then at the end of the month, you can see each one of those ones that you posted up. You're like, Oh shit, I actually did whatever workouts that you're throwing. So hell yeah. There you go. All right. So final day, R8, uh, Ryan, thank you for posting that. Uh, final day would be July 3rd. Uh, to post everything and then yeah you know and again don't make this more difficult than it needs to be post your before pick if you're comfortable with that post you post anything you put in your mouth if you're comfortable with that post your workouts etc there's there's don't feel like you're posting too much it's just an endless stream uh all right let's, let's go around robin here phil final words of wisdom buddy um yeah i'm just gonna make it easy uh I was thinking, um, Paul, we were saying you were going to go hiking. I was thinking, uh, yeah, you're totally right, obviously, to not want to do, like, an insane amount of workout, but also make it fun, you know, just make it fun. I was, I don't know if, this, or if you're into this, but there's a cool thing that's all over the place called Bike Party and also called Critical Mass, two different events. They're, like, giant, like, uh, group rides, so it's pretty fun to, uh, you know, just be in a huge-ass group of bikes. It's a fun, fun way to get some exercise. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to try to make it easy and make it uh, fun and enjoyable. Oh, yeah. Paul, let me throw it over to you, Beast. Yeah, that's a good point, too, because, like, <clears throat> hitting, like, that 10-mile was, like, my minimum success for last year when I really got into it. And it's, like, you can't just pick up where you left off after, like, not doing anything for six months. So, going to keep that in mind and just, like, do something. Just get the fuck out. So, I uh, appreciate the opportunity to share and just uh, the opportunity to uh, be mindful today. So, thanks, guys. Oh yeah. Ray, let me throw it over to you, bud. Oh, sorry, beast. Yeah, I can't hear you on the audio, man. I'm sorry. Phil Phil's eating it up. Um uh MFG, let me throw it over to you, brother. Yeah, man. It's just um you know, especially when it comes to things like working out when you're taking on a new challenge, I think that we oftentimes dismiss the power of vulnerability you know what i mean and open it up to someone else because sometimes when you have those thoughts like oh you know 10 miles the bare minimum you know what i mean now i can't do that it's so easy to have this all or nothing mentality you know what i mean it's 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 a way to insulate yourself but if you just i mean it doesn't even have to be in this group you know what i mean you got friends just start being more vulnerable be like dude i fucking wanted to do this today and i and i'm having a hard time and just because sometimes just the act of making yourself say it out loud to another person brings it into the forefront of your mind for how how still want to see who can get the most shredded. Fuck yeah! All right. Uh, final uh, for me. I just want to answer answer. Uh, I think there's a question here. Uh, Daniel saying I think there's a difference between peacocking and dressing uh, present your, to present yourself in a way that feels good to you. Completely agree. You know, it's like do this for you. If you're going to update your attire, do it for you. My challenge to you would be to try it, right? Put on that new pair of whatever, treat yourself to a new uh, piece of clothing, et cetera, and see how you wear it. Additionally, how are you wearing your skin, right? Let's get your fitness game up so that your skin looks better on your meat body. Um, I'm 100% down for it. And uh, Kaizen, thank you, brother, for uh, bringing it up. I'm so fucking pumped to do it because I've needed it. So as always, dudes, Love you guys. It's not our fighting by your side. See you later.